Now, many of you will have heard that the cross of Karen Tool was cut down over the weekend. Now, a meeting was held yesterday by the Gillicuddy Reeks Forum where a unanimous decision was made to reinstate the cross. However, Atheist Ireland have come out to object to the five-metre cross being returned to the peak. I'm joined in studio by Michael Nugent, uh, the chairman of Atheist Ireland, and on the phone by Timothy Moriarty, the chairman of Beaufort Community Council. Uh, good morning to you both. Good morning. Now, Timothy, first of all, uh, tell us something about the history of this cross. How long is it there, either in its present form or in its wooden form, and why was it put there to begin with? Right. Uh, we can go back to 1950, when uh, a wooden cross was uh, put on top of the mountain uh, uh-huh. at that time. And I suppose in later years, uh, this was replaced, I think, in 1977 by a steel cross. Now, why was it put there in 1950? 1950, that wasn't the Marian year, or was it? I don't know. Uh, well, uh, I suppose uh, you could say at that time... Uh, I suppose uh, if we went to the classes, uh, maybe that's put there as a, a religion uh, sign uh, coming up to the beginning. Okay, and and the, the original wooden cross, how big was it? It was it would be a, a way smaller than what well, it would be a bit smaller than what could be put uh, but still about maybe a meter high. All right, so it, it was nothing like to compare with Christ the Redeemer in Rio and Brazil no, or anything no, like no, that. You know, no. it was a modest cross. It, it was a modest cross. I suppose that they were preparing for uh, uh, the the Marian year, uh, 1954, and mass was set up there at that time. All right. Um, so eventually, I presume the timber was it, it weathered, probably decayed over bad weather. Yeah. And in, in 1978, it was replaced by a, a steel cross. Now, how big is the steel cross? The steel cross would probably be about maybe three metres high. Okay. Two and a half, three metres high. Um, the, the, the planning laws changed in 1963. Yes. Do you know, did it need planning in 1970, whatever, when it was put Well, I, I'm not sure of that, but I suppose when it was up there so long, anyway. But it, like, You'd have retention if it's well, there so long. Yeah, but first, uh, you see, can I say uh, first, there's a lot of people out there believe that Ireland's highest mountain, the Michael Collier Reeks, is is in public ownership. Mm-hmm. Now, this is not true. Who, Mac- who owns... Um, the Michael Collier Reeks is privately owned by sheep farmers that surround the, that surround yeah. the, the mountain. And oh. actually, if anything that should be, have to be done there would have to get the okay for the, from the sheep farmers... Yeah. Which, and what about uh, the planners? Do they, uh, even though it's a reinstatement rather than yeah. something new, yeah. would the planners get involved? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's the thing I suppose we'll be looking into. But uh, I don't know. I suppose anything that's there since 1950 doesn't need planning. Yeah. Um, I, I suppose the, the issue comes up when it, it's uh, been cut down using an angle grinder. Yeah. Do we have any idea? Why it was cut down and who the perpetrators might have been? No, we were completely under the dark on that. It was cut down in the middle of the night. And, and was it cut down for scrap, do you think? And then they found. Uh, well, I, I don't uh, think so. I don't think so because uh, I think the, the cross would have been so heavy anywhere uh, uh, to, uh, that uh, nobody could take it. But yeah. uh, uh, I think it was definitely cut down in such a way that I suppose who cut it down thought would fall off the edge of the cliff and disappeared down the mountain. Yeah. But taking an angle grinder up Carantool is no easy feat either. No. 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 Well, I suppose with the modern machinery today, it would be much lighter than the old ones. Yeah. And it would be battery anyway. And, yeah. And and tell us, you have uh, support for the reinstatement? Well, uh, we're uh, we're in with uh, with people calling from uh, of course from within our parish to uh, to the and outside the parish uh, and uh, pro Ireland. We've even got a lot of calls from pro Ireland pledging their support to him, even as far as West Scotland, uh, people willing to come to get it replaced up the mountain. All right. So but, uh, but before we do that, you know, we uh, it uh, because that's why the Mechley Collier Reeks uh, Forum uh, was set up there a few years ago. That we have farmers tourism bodies, the, the likes of Borfalt, the Kerry County Council, Community Council, all working in the one direction to, to make the, the mountain safe for our right. tourists, because it is getting very eroded, you know. Okay, now, um, Michael Nugent is here uh, with us. He's uh, the chairman of Atheist Ireland. Michael, um, why do you not want this replaced? 
Well, the, the first thing to say is obviously whoever knocked down, uh, you know, if anybody's any information about that, they should go to the police about it. You know, that's an act of vandalism. It's a criminal act. Mm. The only similar case that I can think of in recent decades was when the statue in Ballinus Spittal was attacked by some people and they were fortunately arrested fairly quickly. Turned out to be preachers from a, a rival Christian religion who were praying on their Bibles in court before they were charged. So hopefully whoever did it will, will, uh, will be charged by the police. And now that it's gone, I think, as Tim was saying, when it was put up, it was put up at a time when Ireland was a very Catholic country. It no doubt reflected the ethos of most Irish people in the 1950s. We're now in a different era. We're in a more pluralist Ireland where there are a lot of different religious and non-religious beliefs. And the community council that Tim represents represents the community. It doesn't represent the Catholic Church. And if if, uh, if there is to be something to replace it, it would be more appropriate if it was something inclusive that everybody in the community could identify with. So you don't want the cross to go back up? Well, either something that reflects all religious beliefs and none or something neutral. But if, if What would that be? Well, that's for the community to decide. But I mean, if, if there's a symbol of if, if it's there for the community then it should be inclusive of everybody. If it's there for the Catholic Church, then it should be the Catholic Church and not the local community council that's dealing with the, with the issue. Mm. Um, it would seem though that vandalism might be rewarded in that way. So if you had a bunch of aggressive atheists, for example, who said we don't want crosses in public places, we have a go at this one. Our next stop is the Phoenix Park and the Papal Cross. Let's knock that down, knowing that if it gets knocked down, it will not be replaced? It will, but it's kind of strange for you to, to say the word atheist there in that sentence when the only incident that we're aware of was Christians that knocked down <laughs> No, I'm just saying that, you know, if there were people who object to a religious symbolism, because I'm thinking there are other things around the place um, of all religions that might be targets of people who decide that religion is, um, you know, that might, but, but, but I mean, aggressive Muslims fly planes into buildings, aggressive Christians say things like bombing abortion clinics, aggressive atheists write books. You know, there, there's, there's nothing that atheists do that, that, that could be even remotely brought into that category. People who believe strongly enough in opposing religious symbols in that way are, are very rarely atheists. Okay. Um, Timothy, um, the, the comments coming in, uh, the cross could easily have fallen by itself from metal fatigue or rust. We don't know that it was cut down. That's from Sadie. Do we know that it was definitely cut down? Well, it was definitely cut down. It was a completely clean cut. Clean cut? Yes. So it wasn't any yeah. kind of metal fatigue or, or corrosion. Yeah. Another one. I climbed the hill a lot and most people with me have always thought that this cross was a blemish on an otherwise spectacular landscape. The cross itself is vandalism from 1976. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I suppose uh, everybody have their own ideas about it, and, and uh, why it's there, why it should not be there. But uh, well, we uh, but we regard it now rather than being a, a religious object. We regard it as a symbol, a a marker for tourism because it's photographed yeah. all over the world. What about that, uh, Michael? The the business. This is a little bit of, if you like, architectural archaeology. Uh, it was there. It should be put back up. It tells us something about the country in 1950 and the country in 1976. Maybe something that has passed, but still, it's it's like a, a a statue of somebody long gone that is still bedecking a city street. Well, it was put there, as Tim says, as a religious symbol. It was put there with a ma- with masses. It was put there as a Catholic symbol. Now, if and it's unfortunate that it was vandalised. Obviously, it shouldn't have been vandalised. But we're now in a situation where that gives the people of the locality an opportunity to say, Ireland has become more inclusive. We're no longer simply a Catholic country and we want to put something there in, t- in terms of tourism that reflects the Ireland of today and reflects the community values of no, today. But I, I'm just thinking that if in the time of the monks and, and the round towers and so on, if the people who, and they were attacked many times, the monks, they decided that they should get rid of any remnants of the round towers, uh, having sacked the monks and maybe even set uh, the, the wooden bits of the towers on fire, then we wouldn't have them today. The idea that Okay, we don't have monks in Glendalough or places like it, but we know they were there simply because of the existence of this kind of thing. Now, I know I'm being a bit extreme, but that idea that it tells us something about the way we were. It does, and it, it tells us something about an Ireland where women were locked up in Magdalene laundries, an Ireland where children were being abused on a regular basis, an Ireland that probably would be better off reminding people of something else rather than that. Uh, the cross shouldn't be a problem. Does Atheist Ireland get offended that we have a Christian heritage? Watch the Tour de France and you see crosses on mountains overlooking towns and cities. That's from Robert in Kilkenny. They don't have a problem in France, yeah, which we, doesn't enshrine religion in its uh, republic. No, look, 
everybody has the right to believe whatever they want to believe and Christians have the right to erect whatever statues on their own land or whatever symbols on their own land that, that, that they want to. Uh, in order to protect everybody's right to freedom of conscience and freedom of religion and belief equally, the state should stay neutral on these sort of issues. And it, that, that's Atheist Ireland's position, is, is that if there is something that is that is whatever the ownership is in effect common land that it should reflect the plurality of views in the country and not simply one religious view. Uh, Timothy what do you say to that? Something other than a cross something that should be pluralist um, rather than um, simply Christian? Well um uh, first, uh, as Michael said, we, as you said, yeah, we're, we're a Catholic country, and I no, I said we aren't a Catholic country. I said we used to be a Catholic country. Yeah. Well, we're, we're now a pluralist yeah. country with Catholic laws. Now, excuse my ignorance there, but uh, uh, can I? Uh, do I be, believe that the atheist, which is the word that you know, I kind of ever had, uh, well, that non-believers, non-believers in Jesus Christ, even. Of course, yeah. Well, we believe yeah. that he exists as a person, but we believe that there's yeah. uh, there's no evidence but, for a supernatural being. We, we, in yeah. the same way as you don't believe in Allah, yeah. we don't believe in well, Jesus. Well, uh, the way I look at it, and this would be my personal opinion now, is that uh, if I believe, if I'm a, I'm a Catholic and I believe in a Catholic, then but. I wouldn't oppose my religion in, in anybody, the same way as he shouldn't be opposing it. And if if you decided tomorrow morning to go up and put uh, something, uh, a symbol on behalf of the atheist up in top of Cabin uh, once would you have the blessing of the, the, of the, the farmers there? And, and the would you be supportive of, farmers, of that? Then I'd, I'd have no objection to that. Um, taking you up, Michael, on your business that atheists, all they do is write books. Uh, Pol Pot, Stalin, Mao, just a few examples. Yeah, well, they're, they're people who did things on the basis of their, their fascism rather than on the basis of their lack of belief in God. There's, there's no relationship between not believing in God and having to do anything. There, there are... Uh, good atheists, good, there are good religious people, there are bad atheists, there are bad religious people. What, what religion does is it creates a situation where good people will be doing bad things thinking that they're doing good things. Uh, we're suffocated already with secular symbols and atheistic adverts in our so-called pluralist society, says Chris. Another one, having a giant cross on the highest mountain means that the church has dominion over the country. That is just wrong. Ah, lads, pretending Catholic Ireland never happened doesn't solve the problems and the atrocities that it entailed. So we should remember, Michael, is the message rather than uh, forget. Someone else suggests replace the cross with a wind turbine and suddenly it will become a blemish. Uh, why not put it to a vote? And I guarantee the majority would want the cross put back. Well, Timothy, do you think there would be a majority? Is there a majority in Kerry to reinstate the cross? Well, not alone in Kerry, but throughout Ireland, and the amount of emails and phone calls we are getting, even the Beaufort Community Council, even the Megilly Cully Reeks Forum, the amount of emails that's coming in from as far as West Scotland. Uh, hoping that the cross would be put back. Right. But can I ask Michael there, uh, uh, if he hadn't, if it hadn't been cut down, would he be happy to see it up there for the next 30 years without ever saying a word about it? Yeah, it hadn't, hadn't even crossed my mind uh, that, that there was yeah. a cross up there. Because but, it's but, cut down now. Uh, it, yeah, because uh, it's cut down. There's now, there's, about it. Yeah, because it's cut down. There's now an opportunity for the community to show that in 2014 it's more inclusive than it was in in, uh, in 1950 or 1976. And with regard to majority votes, the whole point of freedom of conscience and freedom of religion and belief is that the majority should not rule. We saw what happened in Northern Ireland when people said majority rule should hold sway. <laughs> But I, I, I don't see a, I, I don't see its majority r- rule or anything like that. So, like if 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 we went out say, living in some parts of South Africa you now, where uh, the, these ladies cover their head and, and things like that, and they have their own laws out there, we'd have to fall in behind those those laws. I can't see people coming in from outside uh, that, that uh, they should be told it's a religious country. We don't oppose it on anybody, but. Just the laws. We have certain laws, and you'd have to abide by these rules. Well, the, the United Nations has a universal declaration on, yeah. on human rights that uh, uh, protects the right of everybody to freedom of religion or belief and says that majority rules should not and, and cannot indeed be used to deny people that right. Mm. We will leave it there. Timothy, thank you very much for joining us. That's Timothy Moriarty, Chairperson of Beaufort uh, Community Council, and Michael Nugent, Nugent Chairperson of Atheist Ireland. Um, last ones, um, get over the past. 
it's uh, get over yourself the past is the past we are still a Catholic country whether Michael likes it or not that's from Anne another one says religious icons should be confined to places of worship or if people want to in their homes don't replace the cross with anything just let nature take its place 